I will show you here, clearly I have two different Bibles, right? The Bible does not accurately give you proper information. Both Bibles are different. Both Bibles are different. This is a King James Version makeup. This is a New World's Translation Bible. I also have the Kant's, let me get my other Bible here in my bookshelf real quick. The NIV. So don't come with me with your little, you know the, all the answers. None of us know the answers. Even the scientists, the archaeologists, they don't know all the answers because it's always something new. But some of you go, oh, the Bible tells exactly the truth. The Bible gives you stories. You're not listening to the words. The Bible doesn't give you everything accurate. You understand? Some of you talking about Christmas. Christmas came from Africa. Some of y'all are crazy. Christmas was started in Norway. That's where it was started, in Europe. We're gonna discuss that as well. You so, you, you so institutionalized, you, but you got to cross-reference the things you do. Understand that, but you don't cross-reference. When you cross-reference, at least give it 50% to see if it matches. Can you believe people talking about Christmas started in Africa? Talking about the pine trees? We have pine trees in Africa? Somebody explain that to me. And then you Christian brothers and sisters, you don't, either you know or you don't care. Christianity was in Africa but not the way the Europeans took it. So let's go get into a class and talk about Omar Johnson and give a, I'm gonna give my viewpoints and what I believe and let Omar Johnson tell him himself. This information's gotta be spread. Get your pencil and papers ready. But before we do all that, we must pay all due respects to the Creator. The sun rises. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Our moon. Your skin color has nothing to do with your faith. 
obviously. Because <laughs> we get people just sitting up there chopping each other up. Like it's no amount like this is what I got to do. It seems like when every time when the conscious community starts to pick up momentum and speed, somebody else is ready to break it down. That's a damn shame. See you in class. Because many of you have seen, you have heard, you have read the information that has been shared across social network about the fact that the state of Pennsylvania has brought me up on charges by way of the State Board of Psychology. I have been ordered to stand trial in the state capital of Pennsylvania in Harrisburg on the first Monday of the new year, other than January 1st, and that is January the 8th. I am going. I want to apologize to my brothers and sisters in Tokyo. You had already arranged the events and the venues in Tokyo well ahead of time. You did your job. But because of white supremacy, that got cut short. It was interrupted because I now have to go and stay in trial for bogus charges created because members of my own race sought to destroy me by constantly complaining about me to the white authorities. And so to my family in Tokyo, I'm asking that you make your way to Osaka, Japan, and to Nagoya, Japan. I am still coming. I just will not be coming on the day originally planned. But I still will be in Osaka, and I still will be in Nagoya. And yes, I will still be in Shanghai, China. So again, my apologies, Tokyo, and I look to see you soon. Shout out to my entire Black Asia family that's been holding tight with me. For the brothers and sisters in Toronto, Canada, that event will still take place. It is scheduled. I am contracted, and to the best of my ability, and to the best of my knowledge, that event will take place in Toronto, Canada in February. All of the events that I have agreed to on the college campuses, I will continue to uphold my agreements. I've already contracted with several HBCUs to do some speaking during Black History Month on those campuses, and I intend to keep that word. Brothers and sisters, I am disappointed. I am ashamed and to some extent humiliated by the fact that for the past three years, many of you, have sought to destroy my credibility. Many of you have taken every opportunity presented to you to try to destroy the image and the work of Dr. Umar Johnson. Although I am the only, I repeat, I am the only, I will say again, I am the only personality in the black consciousness circuit with my expertise in child mental health, special education, and school psychology. Despite that I'm the only one who can give black parents that type of expertise, from within the conscious community, you didn't care enough about our children. You didn't care enough about our children to say, hands off of Dr. Umar because he's doing the work that no other speaker in the conscious community can do. Let me say that again. He's doing the work that no other speaker in the conscious community can do. He's filling a void that no other speaker in the conscious community can fill. That doesn't make... All right, brothers and sisters. I want you to understand what I'm about to tell you. The brother Omar Johnson's already told you that it's your own people, own people, that's trying to take them out. Hold on. Excuse me for that interruption. But when your own people try to take you out, now people mean not your family relatives or your your bloodline or descent but people in the melanin race over the years try to take this brother out Omar Johnson for what? this is a continuous thing that happens in our community and I'm going to tell you something jealousy runs rapid in the melanin race I'm listening this is why I try to tell everybody, don't follow me, because you're not going to dictate what I'm going to say, what issues I'm going to talk about. And this is why you got to stay on a low platform, because once you put yourself out there, what happens next? The man got to explain himself. He has to explain himself. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Believable. All I gotta do is say this here. From time to time I will be navigating my opinion on this issue here, which I am very, very uncomfortable 
because I, it's just like, it's an ongoing process of our people that's constantly, I mean constantly, figuring out a way to hurt each other from the left and from the right. You got so some so-called scholars, I guess they never had money before, so they robbed the community. Speaking my opinion, I wasn't there, but for the information that's out there, this is what they're talking about. Then you got the people in the conscious community who's getting upset with a lot of these brothers and sisters that put in this work that's trying to liberate you, wake you up, for you to understand what's going on. And millions of you do understand around the world. But the thing is, is so many of you try to find a way to destroy the people. This is my whole point. Dr. Omar Johnson. The state is trying to take away his license. Ah, oh, man. Let's get into it. More important, because those brothers and sisters also have expertises and interests and competencies that the community can benefit as well. I'm simply stating that when it comes to the school to prison pipeline, I am the foremost expert in that area, not just in black consciousness, but within black America. So it does hurt me. It does hurt me for someone who have worked as long as I as long as I have and have given their life as fully and as in depthly and as selflessly as I have to be attacked by members of the very same community that I sought to help. Yes, the campaign began right here in my own city, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with a brother who I used to work with at an African Senate charter school. He was the first to write articles about me not having a doctorate. Obviously a lie. Okay. He was the first to write letters about me stating I was misusing the funds. Obviously a lie. And then another brother who's not from Philadelphia but was living here at the time joined in on the charade and joined in on the campaign. And then a sister from Texas joined in and then other people joined in simply because they had nothing better to do and clearly could not have been working on behalf of African people because there's no way you can have time to tear down the foremost scholar in this country if you genuinely have something of significance to do for black people. As you all know, GoFundMe. I got a message from GoFundMe that they intend to take down or remove the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy campaign from their platform if I do not provide them with a of funds and with a contact number for the realtor of FDMG. To this second, I have not moved to provide them with the information that they have requested. And the reason I have not moved to provide them with the information that they have requested is because I have already, I have already previously provided them with the bank statement and the bank details and have given them full legal permission to contact the bank without my presence to find out whether or not a single penny, to find out whether or not a single penny of the funds donated to me in the cause of building America's first independent black boy academy based strictly off the principles of revolutionary pan-African nationalism and international economics. I gave them permission to contact the bank to find out if Dr. Umar misappropriated a single penny of any of the funds that you all have so graciously given me from your earnings over the past years. But rather than do that, they continue to harass me. Every time one of you, not white people, but black people, every time one of you complains to me, complains about me to go fund me, they contact me asking for information that they have already received. And given the fact that GoFundMe keeps so much of the money, given the fact that GoFundMe keeps so much of the funds that are donated, of that $401, $402,000 that you see on the platform's website, we've only received about $250,000, maybe $275,000 of your donations. For the sake of convenience, 
GoFundMe has kept over a hundred and twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars of that money just for the sake of convenience, robbing us and then had the audacity to ask for proof when you've taken already so much money from us when you've already been provided with that proof. So as far as I'm concerned, they can pretty much suspend the campaign, which will in turn force all of you to send your donations in by check or by money order. Brothers and sisters, I'm not a crook. I am not a thief. My ambitions and my interests are a lot greater than money. What I want to do for our people and what I want to do for our young people goes beyond money. I know many of the hustlers in the conscious community, and I know that many of the hustlers in the black community can't think beyond their next meal, can't think beyond their next shopping spree, can't think beyond their next rent or mortgage payment. But Dr. Umar Johnson is a visionary. I think indefinitely and I think very far into the future in terms of how I can best make a contribution to impact our people. But it bothers me that the same thing that was done to the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, it bothers me that the same thing that was done to the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, greatest black leader and organizer of the 20th century, 100 years ago, 100 years ago, Black men and women went to the government of the United States and begged them to destroy Marcus Garvey, begged them to incarcerate Marcus Garvey, begged them to deport Marcus Garvey. And so here we are 100 years later, and as a race of people, we still have not learned. A 100 years later, and the same thing that was done to the king of Pan-Africanism is now being done to the prince of Pan-Africanism. But I want all my supporters to know, and I want all my college student supporters to know, and I want all the elders and the teenagers and the little children who support me, the unnamed millions from Africa. Let's stop right there for a minute, class. Let's stop there for a minute. See, I knew about Marcus Garvey was infiltrated because in some videos I've done probably six months ago, I told you how our own people infiltrate each other. Now, people, once again, doesn't mean you're related, doesn't mean you blood ties. It means from the melanin skin color. Now, if we all from the same hood, Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, or North Carolina, South Carolina, Louisiana, Dallas, Texas, you know what I'm talking about, the community. But you get these people who sit there and for some apparent reason want to infiltrate you or infiltrate the brother, Omar Johnson. He's not the first and he's not going to be last. This is why I keep telling y'all, be careful. Be careful, and I can tell you from my own experience, I've been infiltrated myself. I've been infiltrated. People around you will, will sit up there and turn against you the minute they get mad at you, the minute they get over emotional. It happened to me. It happened to me. I've been blocked on Facebook so many times. I've been blocked on YouTube so many times. I'm telling you, this is a small platform, okay? I've been in situations already how our own people will try to hurt you. Either they jealous for what you got, either they want what you got, or maybe they just don't understand altogether, or quite frankly, they don't like you point blank. I come to a conclusion that our people, not all, but a great percentage, love being where they at. They want somebody to tell them what to do. They want somebody to guide them. They want they don't want to take care of their bodies properly. Look what we have here in the Christmas. Christmas is tomorrow, am I correct? Okay. We talk about $17 billion of black owned money will be spent on on other people's cultures. But they won't buy no black black owned products. Oh no, they can't do that. 
They won't do that. Pay attention. But Omar Johnson is not the first to be infiltrated. Marcus Garvey, this man right here, just in case, if so many of you probably forgot who he is, and I noticed a lot of you have forgot Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey was infiltrated from the inside out. This is how it starts. This is nothing new. Understand, for many of you who do not know Marcus Garvey, I will show you. Marcus Garvey was one of the greatest leaders of all times. He was Jamaican. He had over 100,000 employees, black employees, right? He had owned many different establishments, black owned establishments. But guess what? You had people in the melanin race of the darker people who decide to go to the government and infiltrate it. I believe more of the point of tax invasion. If I'm, cool, if, I'm, if I'm not right, do your research. Brothers and sisters, gods and goddesses out there. You're not helping the purpose of trying to destroy men who's already elevated themselves. Men of righteous path. You don't want to be African. You don't want to study your African spirituality. You don't have to. You don't have to. But why try to stir up something and to destroy something for other people who wants to participate and find the African spirituality? Why do you want to sit up there and try to destroy that? It is their right to want to be and get to know their true identity. But you see, a lot of you, too many of you, accept the way of the system of things. We got people dying on the street. You accept that. We got drug dealers. You got people who's on the alcoholism. You got people having babies like it's no tomorrow out of wedlock. What do you think? This is acceptance? Then you got all these so-called clinics. These clinics ain't helping you. Look at the pharmaceuticals that's around you. They got you going back and forth to, the, to get medicine every five minutes. You accept these things because you think it's the norm. But when you get brothers like Dr. Umar Johnson and W.E.D. Du Bois, Malcolm X, you got great leaders like, like, like um, Harriet Tubman and all these people. Even Harriet Tubman them have problems. Harriet Tubman would clearly state if you look at our documents, that you can tell you might have to get rid of this black person because if they talk about I don't want to be free, they're not good for the cause. You got to get rid of them. We're not going to be able to help everybody. I don't do this for money. I do this for the love of what I believe in. I don't want your money. Because, see, I, I see where it all ends. I've been watching this and doing this for a while. I've been slowly coming out. Slowly. And I've been watching how our own people, not blood related, not descended, but in the communities, throughout wherever you at in the world, find a way to try to do harm. Well, let's let Johnson, Mr. Johnson, continue on what he needs to say. to Australia, to the United Kingdom, to the Caribbean, to Central and South America, to Canada, to the South Pacific, to China, to Japan, throughout the entire world. I want my supporters to know that I will not abandon my post. I will not abandon my mission. I will not abandon my agenda. Because as I have told so many of you for so long, I do the work that I do because I believe that I was born to do it. This isn't coming from a place of narcissism. This isn't coming from a place of arrogance, but I believe within my heart that it is no coincidence that I happen to be related to the greatest black leader of the 19th century, and that I happen to be a disciple of the greatest black leader of the 20th century. I don't believe in coincidences. 
I don't believe it was a coincidence that my mother brought me into this world on the same day that the Nat Turner War began. That she brought me into this world on the same day that the Haitian Revolution began. That she brought me into this world the same day that the George Jackson Prison Revolution began. That she brought me into this world on the same day that the Frederick Douglass Fugitive Slave Convention began. I don't believe in no coincidences. So I'm going to stand for it. They can take the bachelors. They can take the second bachelors. They can take the first masters. They can take the second masters. They can take the third masters. They can take the doctorate degree. They can take the principal certificate. They can take the school psychology certificate. They can prevent me from getting my license as a psychologist. Whatever it is they want to do, they can go ahead and do it. But I will continue to fight for the rights of our children. And I will continue to fight for the rights of our people. And I want to thank all you brothers and sisters who have stood by my side through thick and thin. You were there in 2015 when a certain female tried to destroy my credibility by lying and saying that I took school money and spent it inappropriately. That she saw me spend money from the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. If that's true, may I die right now. If she saw me spending money from your pocket that you gave me to build a school for our children, may I die right now. Now this is, I have to inject in here. Once again, here we go. I forgot about that issue in 2015. Here, a melanated woman, a black woman, is going to sit up there and say that Omar Johnson took money from the school to spend it. And when he said improperly, basically talking about um, doing things that, he, that, 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 you know, people do outside on a private time. This is this. I don't. I don't. I don't famine this stuff. I, I just. I just don't. I don't famine what's. What's going on? I just don't famine this, because it's too much of our people just seem to constantly get so misconstrued and get angry and then attack. But don't attack the other cultures that's doing harmful to our peoples. It's like they really want to live in a system of things. They believe it's more comfortable for them. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's sad. But let's let the brother continue talking. What bothered me then was that so many brothers in the conscious community, some of whom I consider to be associates, some of whom I've helped get paid, they seized upon the opportunity that she presented to try to destroy Dr. Umar Johnson through their platform or their media outlets. Everywhere I turned, there was a conversation about me without me. Everywhere I turned, a conversation about me without me. Up until 2015, I didn't have these problems. But the minute I started raising money to give our children a school that they deserve, all of a sudden, my problems began. And that very same year, that coon from Philadelphia began writing articles about me, jealous because he wished he could have been me. He wanted to be where I am and where I was then. And because his career didn't take off the way that my did, the way that my career did, he resorted to character assassinating. He resorted to passing around lies that I didn't have a doctorate, which all of you have since learned to be true. He resorted to coming up with fanciful schemes and ideas about me stealing school money. He started to fire that so many other thirsty, self-hating Negroes would then join in upon. But it's not about him today. Even as I sit here talking to you right now, another brother in the conscious community, a brother who claims he wants to work with me, a brother who tells people every chance he gets an opportunity that he wants to bury the hatchet with Dr. Umar Johnson. Well, he just did an hour and a half video taking every shot he possibly could, bringing up every misstep, every mishap, and every misattribution made about me over the past year or two. As thirsty as he could possibly be, he could not wait to do a video on me. Why in the hell does a black man need to spend 90 minutes on film talking about another black man? From All right, brothers and sisters, gods and goddesses, kings and queens. This is part one of class. You see, class is now always going to be by ancient historical history 
It's not going to be about Sumerian texts, Babylonian texts. It's not going to be about Cush, Kemet. It's not going to be about Atlantis. It's not going to be about Persia. Sometimes we need to talk about what's going on now. And in my class, this small, tiny little platform I got, I talk about all issues. And this is why, and I tell a lot of y'all out there, don't follow me. If you watch my video, take it for what it is. Keep it moving. I tell you right now, I only got 15 views. I like it just like that. I don't want no 500, 15 and all that. Because y'all, the people out there, is psychologically indefinitely lost. There's no need to sit up there and go, why, why, why? This brother for years has been putting this information out there. This brother decided to step it up another notch to help his people. Not bloodline, but the darker ones, the black people, our culture. And all you think about doing is trying to destroy this man. And then you were talking about oh, why we can't unite. This is a great example. Unite? Really? In the black community? Around the world? <laughs> right. See you in part two.